Hey everybody, I'm Tim and today we're gonna dive into the internet drama and you're watching Cigars Daily. Well, Cigars Daily Nation, I'm actually about to finish the cigar that I smoke during this video you're about to watch, and I was editing it, and I came back in the studio to just add this little bit to it. A couple of things I want to address up front, and the first thing is, why in the hell would I make this video? When I've started doing Cigars Daily, and we would said we want to make the best damn cigar content online, for me, that comes with some criteria. I always want to be making videos about things that are really relevant to cigar smokers, answering questions that you guys are already asking and being a part of the larger cigar conversation. That being said, when it comes to this brand, this is something that I feel like needs to be addressed because it is such a topic of conversation online. Also for me, when it comes to working with cigars and cigar makers, like Cigars Daily gives me the freedom to work with brands and blends that I truly believe in. And right now, as I kick this off, it's because I see something in Gurkha where I think there is value. And as I'll say in the video, not necessarily value for absolutely everybody out there, but certainly I've seen things happen with Gurkha that are noteworthy and that I wanted to tell you guys about. So for the reason for making this video and what's in it, that's why. Also, as I was editing it, I feel like I say the brand's name too much. So if somebody wants to start maybe a little tally notepad and put down in the comments how many times I say Gurkha, Godspeed, because it seems like too many. It feels like too many, like a lot. Anyway, here's the video. Get more out of this in all our videos when you join the community on Cigars Daily Plus. And for this video, I just lit up Gurkha's Cellar Reserve 18 year. And I do it, by the way, unapologetically, because today we have to talk about the topic of Gurkha. If you smoke cigars and you go online and you mix those two things together and you join the cigar communities, you're going to hear some people talk some trash about Gurkha specifically. Specifically, what they're going to say is Gurkha is trash. Then there is this segment of the cigar smoking population that says that and thinks that. And it's like very promotional about it, by the way. If they see a dog turd on the ground, they're going to take a picture of it and post it and say, there's a Gurkha cigar. But that's just one segment of the population of the cigar smoking world. There's this other segment of cigar smokers who I see lots of comments and lots of posts that they're like, I like Gurkha cigars. I don't understand what everybody's all upset about. I smoke them quite frequently and enjoy them. And so my hope today is to take you guys through what I've seen during my almost decade in the cigar industry and explain sort of where the hate for Gurkha comes from and where the love has been born as well. It's been a very interesting ride for this brand and I'll ask you now to drop your comment down below. Dear God, heaven be with us. What do you think of Gurkha cigars? Are you a fan? Not a fan? And I'll ask you now, please do this respectfully in the comments. You may not like Gurkha, but this is not an invitation to come and just trash Gurkha in the comments. I do appreciate, by the way, that the Cigars Daily Nation is a group of predominantly very positive people and you all are traditionally great about this stuff. So drop a comment down below. I'd love to see what you guys think of the brand. But it's been an interesting ride for Gurkha. I mean... For a brand that's been around for over 30 years, they have done a lot and gone through a lot like all long standing brands have done. And so that's what I wanna take you through right now. And so with no further ado, let's jump right in. As a brand, Gurkha has been around since about 1990 which means they're coming up on like 35 years of cigar making. And among people in the industry, they're known as one of the best marketed brands out there. I mean, first of all, their logo, the Gurkha guy, who is a, I guess, a Turkish soldier or something like that. Anyway, they're supposed to be complete badasses. And for a lot of people just getting into cigars, Gurkha is a brand 
that's pretty widely distributed. Most shops out there carry it. You can pretty readily find them. And so people get acquainted to them very quickly. This is also very similar with other brands like Oliva or Macanudo or Punch Cigars. They're pretty synonymous with the premium cigar world. And so the question remains, why are people hating all over Gurkha? Where does their path diverge from the rest of the cigar world? Do they really just make trash cigars or did something happen? And this is what I saw in the cigar world. It seemed more like something really happened, but was followed by some pretty impressive and pretty important changes. In order to create a quality cigar brand, you have to pretty constantly pay attention to a few things. In order to create a great experience for people, your cigars have got to have great construction. That great construction has to produce amazing flavor. And that amazing flavor is only good if it's consistent from cigar to cigar and year to year. So this is the work that most cigar makers are constantly employed in. And if you take your eyes off the ball for any period of time and one of these areas falls out, it can cause huge problems for your brand. And this is some of the trouble that Gurkha ran into. You see, about 10 years after Gurkha started, there was this short period of time that people in the industry called the cigar boom. It was around the late 90s, early 2000s, when the number of cigar consumers in America rose drastically and suddenly. No cigar makers out there could roll enough cigars for the new consumers coming in. I mean, cigar shops were literally ordering from manufacturers to get whatever they could because nobody could roll enough cigars. Now, Gurkha was a brand during that time. This is especially as a time where online cigars were becoming a popular thing as well. People were starting to share their cigars in communities with each other and even find their favorite cigars at e-tailers online. And this is some of where Gurkha's problems really started to show up. You see, no matter what industry you're in, this battle between, you know, sort of your brick and mortar shops and your online purveyors is a huge deal. And it has to do with one thing, and that's pricing. A lot of the online guys are willing to go, well, lower margin than your brick and mortar shops, or at least they can afford to do that. And so they do, they count on volume in exchange for discounts. So when people go online, they're naturally shopping the best price out there. And so that's something that a lot of manufacturers start to take advantage of. And this is where you get into a lot of danger, especially if you end up compromising the quality of a product in order to give people a deal. There are a few ways to look at this in the premium cigar industry. A lot of cigar makers will try to price protect their products and keep people from discounting them. The idea is this. If a cigar maker t makes a $10 cigar and then all of a sudden it's getting sold for $4 online, it's not really a $10 cigar, at least in the eye of the consumer anymore. Now it's just a $4 cigar. But how can you take a $10 cigar and sell it for $4 without eventually compromising the quality of the product? And this is what happened for a period of time with Gurkha. Over a, a period of, I would say, at least a few years, there were times where people were getting deals on Gurkha that were just too damn good to be true. I got to be totally honest with you. I even got emails. I mean, hell, we're talking about the early 2000s. This is when I really started smoking cigars, 2003, 2004. That's when I turned 18 years old. And Gurkhas were some of the first cigars I bought and enjoyed during my early years in cigars. But then very quickly, I started getting emails from my favorite guys to order from. And these emails were saying things like, come online and get 93% off Gurkha cigars. And it's like 93%. I mean, what other portion of the retail world would you go in and find 93% off and expect that you're getting full value out of that discount? It's just one of those seems too good to be true things. 
And certainly the experience for a lot of cigar smokers was that. People were getting cigars that were compromised in terms of construction. People talk about the burn on some Gurkhas, flavor. They talk about flavor profiles not being very consistent as well. And so all three parts of the sort of infrastructure of experience were compromised with some of Gurkha's products for a period of time. And it's, well, in the industry, what we call it is we say they got whored out online, which is not the most polite term to use, but that is the term that gets used. And it's what they say about brands that really get super duper discounted, especially when you see a lack of quality there. Now, this was not lost on Gurkha. Obviously, at some point, they realized that this was going to become a problem. You can compromise quality in order to grow a brand to a point, and then at some point, you have to confront the fact that there's quality in at least a number of your products that are starting to cost you reputation points and eventually cost you revenue as well. And Gurkha, as a cigar-making company, really did have to come back to the drawing board. And it's something they did, man, I got to say, this was happening when I, in early in my years in cigars. So this is probably seven, maybe eight years ago that Gurkha started rebranding, reformatting, even reblending whole new product lines to present a Gurkha that brought people back to what they knew of the brand when it first came out around the 90s. A good brand that's still well marketed, that makes good cigars that are consistent and reliable for people. At least that was their goal. And so you saw a bunch of brands come out from Gurkha, stuff like the Cellar Reserve. There's a Cellar Reserve 18 year. They also make another Cellar Reserve 15 year that they say have 15 and 18 year aged leaves in them. Then there's other ones like the Gurkha Revenant, which comes in a Corojo wrapper. And now they've got a Gurkha Revenant in a Maduro wrapper as well. Of course, one of the most popular Gurkha cigars of all time is the Gurkha Ghost. If someone's posting a Gurkha online, I've seen it being the Ghost sort of more than any other single cigar that, that Gurkha makes. So, and, and they make a lot of cigars, by the way. But certainly today, what I find myself seeing in the cigar community, especially online, is this. Gurkha is sort of like the child star. Like the, the, the childhood star, the, the one that rode on with an alien on a bicycle or the one that got left at home alone while their family went out of town and they had a great childhood career. And then those teenage years were kind of rough on them. And dear God, we hope they all come around at some point and some of them do and some of them don't. But that seems to be the focus that Gurkha has had with the re-blending, re-branding and sort of refabbing the entire world uh, of the brand. And so now I see basically two segments of cigar smokers. And there's really not a lot of in between on this one. There are people that just don't like Gurkha. Their only real comment about Gurkha is Gurkha is trash, period. And these are people, some of them, who come out of that period of time where Gurkha was legitimately making a subpar product. But then there's also this other segment of cigar smokers, people who have tried Gurkha's more recent blends, don't have past experience or a bad taste in their mouth, and haven't really bought into all the negative hype about Gurkha. And I see them commenting a lot saying, a lot of people rag on Gurkha, but I don't really understand why. That seems to be the voice of that group of people. And when it comes to the brand itself, I don't know what to tell you. It's something you really honestly have to make a decision for yourself about. You know, I talk a lot about trying different brands and everybody in the cigar industry does. They say, try as many different brands as you can. We even advocate for giving brands a second chance. Now, some of you have already done that and decided you don't like these cigars, the Gurkha cigars, and that's fine. Like, I'm not here to try to make everybody love any one brand because I don't think there is any singular brand that's for absolutely everybody. My only real goal in this video is to sort of take you guys through what I've seen Gurkha go through and sort of explain why if you love Gurkha, you might see a lot of shade thrown at it and why if you don't like Gurkha, maybe you don't even know that they've gone through this sort of weird rough patch and are working their way through it. 
In any case, I personally have some respect for what Gurkha is doing to try to refortify their brand and make it a good quality, reliable brand of cigars that people can count on and trust. And so I'll ask you again, drop your comments down below. Please be respectful. What do you think of Gurkha? What has your experience been? Have you come back around and tried another Gurkha again since they released, you know, the Cellar Reserve and the Revenant, some of the newer stuff that they've put out? They do have a lot of new cigars out these days. And of course, get even more out of this video when you join the community on Cigars Daily Plus. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Tim signing off for Cigars Daily, and I will see you in the comments.